Hi guys, it's Mr. Wilder, and I'm talking to you today about economic systems um, and the different economic systems that are currently uh, prevalent throughout the world today. So let's go and get started. An economic system is just how a society uses its resources, land, labor, capital, remember those, to uh, satisfy people's wants. And right now there's basically three basic systems economic systems in the world, traditional, command, and market economies. There's a fourth system called a mixed market economy that combines parts of a market economy and a command economy. But uh, we'll primarily talk about traditional command and market right now. Okay. In a traditional economy, uh, you need to know that these are kind of uh, uh, tribal uh, type of economies where uh, there's not very many of them left in the world today. Uh, these would have been like the Indian tribes we used to have in the United States, uh, the tribes that are still in Africa and South America. They tend to have more traditional economies. They center on their family. Uh, decisions are based on customs and beliefs. Uh, so it's just kind of how they've always done things economically, and they don't really see a need to change it. And um, the good of the group or the family always comes before and individuals wants or needs. So you're always taking care of the whole group instead of just yourself. Some other uh, advantages and disadvantages of a traditional economy. Some advantages are there's little disagreement over goals uh, or roles in the economy. The methods of production, distribution are determined by custom. The disadvantages uh, are as a result of resistance to change, they tend to be less productive. They don't, uh, you're not going to grow this economy very much. Uh, they do not use new methods, uh, you know, things like computers and things like that, robots, uh, assembly lines, uh, people not in jobs. Sometimes people are in jobs that they're not really suited for, but it's just tradition that their family's always done that. Uh, there tends to be low productivity, uh, which results in a low standard of living. People don't, uh, there aren't a lot of rich people in a traditional economy, or even middle class people. Um, tends to be a pretty low standard of living, enough to get by on. Uh, the next type of economic system is called a command economy. Uh, this is also called a centrally planned economy. Um, and it's usually part of a government, a very strong government system where uh, the government has a lot of power and makes most of the decisions. Um, instead of the people. Uh, the government determines what to produce, how to produce it, and who gets the products. Uh, the government determines who is employed, what their work are, hours are, and what their pay scales are. Uh, so the government does all of that. The wants of individual consumers are rarely considered. It's more uh, the wants of the group or the whole country. And uh, the government owns all of the means of production. So all the resources, all the factories, all the land, uh, the government owns all of that. So they can decide what to do with it. Some examples of a command economy, they're usually associated with a socialist government or a communist government. So a socialist type of political system or a communist type of government. Uh, a guy named Karl Marx, uh, influenced uh, societies to adopt command economies, modern societies to adopt command economies. Uh, this was especially true in the Soviet Union. Uh, socialism is where you, the government owns some of the factors of production. Communism uh, believes there should be no private property and not very much political freedom. So you don't uh, have the same type of freedoms we have in the United States with voting and um, protesting against the government, things like that. It's a very authoritative system, authoritarian system, uh, which requires total obedience to the government. If you speak out and say you don't like the government, you might end up in prison or someplace worse. So communism is authoritarian socialism. It's another way to think of communism. Like I said before, Karl Marx had a lot of influence on this uh, socialist and communist uh, type of governments that were established in the late early 1900s. Uh, he lived during the Industrial Revolution. He thought factory workers, uh, factory owners used workers as a resource, so they were getting exploited uh, and the, because they were working for such low wages 
and the factory owners were making so much profit. He thought the workers should rebel and establish a classless society. He wrote a very famous book called The Communist Manifesto with a gentleman named Frederick Engels and uh, another book called Das Kapital. In a socialist and communist type of government where there's command economy, there's something called democratic socialism and it's established under democrat, it has a democratic political process. Uh, the government owns the basic industries and other private industries. Central planners uh, make decisions for the government and central planners for the government owned industries and central planners might control other sectors like healthcare, things like that. That's why a lot of people have criticized President Obama for being having socialist ideas because of his uh, health care plan, Obamacare. There are currently no pure command economies today. Um, so uh, they're all kind of kind of mixed in with the socialist and communist governments. Uh, some economists still, some economies still have mostly command elements, places like the Soviet Union, the old Soviet Union, China. Uh, North Korea, Cuba, places like that. Uh, example of a command economy today is North Korea. It's communist. North Korea used uh, resources for the military, not for necessities. They built a large army, uh, had nuclear, a nuclear weapons program in the 1990s and 2000s. Because they were putting so much money into their military, uh, millions died of hunger and mal malnutrition. In the 1990s, production decreased and the economy shrank. Since 2003, some market activity has been allowed and uh, their economy is doing a little bit better. But that's an example, again, where a command economy has not been very successful in the world. In theory, command e economic systems are fair to everyone, um, but in practice, there's a lot of disadvantages. Central planners do not understand the local conditions, so they, you know, they may be in uh, the capital of the country, but they don't know what really, what's really going on out in the uh, rest of the country. Uh, workers have little motivation to be productive or conserve resources because they don't get to keep any of their profits. Uh, there's artificially low prices set by the government that leads to shortages because things are so cheap, people buy a lot of it, and then there's shortages. And then uh, people are sacrificed to carry out the central, centrally planned policies. So the government doesn't worry about uh, people dying of malnutrition or people dying of uh, diseases and things, or schools or things like that. They're more worried about production quotas being met. Okay, last economic system uh, we want to talk about is called a market economy. It's driven by choices of consumers and producers. So basically supply and demand. Consumers spend money and go into business and sell their labor as they wish. Producers decide how to use their resources to make the most money, uh, not the government. Consumers and producers benefit each other when they act in mutual self-interest. So consumers make, consumers buy the things that producers make, producers make the things the consumer wants, and they try to set it at a price that everyone can be agreeable to. In a market economy, it's important uh, that the government has laws to set aside private property uh, so that uh, you can own your business and you, your business is safe and your property is safe. There's limited government involvement. Another term that's used with the market economy is called laissez-faire. It's a French term that means government should not interfere with the economy. Another term used with market economies is capitalism. You've probably heard that word before. And this is a system having private ownership of all the factors of production. So the land, labor, and capital aren't owned by the government, they're owned by private individuals or private corporations. Um, in a market economy, producers will create products consumers demand. Actual market economies all have some government involvement. There's really no true market economy where the government has no involvement. Like in the United States, the government does have some involvement in the economy. Uh, fundamentals of a market economy, there's a voluntary, voluntary exchange in markets. Uh, the buyers can buy what they want, the sellers can sell what they want. Competition uh, and consumer sovereignty. Consumer sovereignty means buyers choose the products and control what is produced. 
competition controls self-interest behavior because there's so many other people making products uh, and there's no limit on how many different companies can make different products. The sellers or producers have to offer a low price or good value to consumers to make a profit. So you can't set your price artificially high and say, well, we're the only one that's being, that makes this product. There's usually lots of competition in a market economy, so you have to set your price competitively. There's specialization in market economy. People can concentrate their efforts and the activities they do best. Instead of being told by the government what to do, you can do what you do best. This leads to an efficient use of resources and leads to higher quality, lower priced products in the long run. I want to talk to you a little bit about the circular flow in a market economy. Um, the circular flow model uh, illustrates how interactions occur in a market, and I'll show you that model in the next slide. It represents the two key decision makers, households and businesses. Households represents the people, businesses are the businesses, obviously. It shows how the two, two markets where households and businesses meet, and uh, we'll see where the goods and services and the resources go. In a circular flow in a market economy, there's factor markets. Factor markets, um, these are the factors, factor in the factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entre entrepreneurship. Product markets are markets where goods and services are bought and sold. Um, so that would include places like hy Bee and the mall and online, stuff like that. Okay. In the circular flow model, it shows how the market uh, economies operate. Outside, the outside arrow in this model shows the flow of money. The inside arrow shows the flow of resources and products. So here's the circular flow model, and you can see the outside arrows, uh, starting with the households, they spend money. That goes into the product market, things that have been made, and that gives the businesses money. The businesses can pay for the resources they need to make their products. That's the factor market. And then that money goes back to the households where they can spend their money again. And then go in the opposite direction, the households sell land, labor, cap, uh, have land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, this is the factor market, and then uh, they can buy productive resources, sell their goods and services, and then buy goods and services. So it's kind of a nice little circular pattern there. In a market economy, the advantages are individuals are free to make economic choices and pursue their own work interests. Uh, so unlike the command economy where the government decides, in a market economy you get to decide. There's less government control, that means more freedom, especially political freedom. Locally made decisions mean better use of resources and productivity, so instead of the capital of a country making the decision, it's uh, different. Uh, uh, different cities and towns and uh, businesses making those decisions. The profit motive ensures resources are used efficiently because you want to make as much money as you can. You don't want to waste things. Wasting loses money, so you try to uh, be as efficient as possible. And because there's so much competition in a market economy, you get higher quality goods and more products to choose from. There are some disadvantages to market economy. In a pure market economy, there's no way to provide public goods and services. So one of the things our government does, because we're not a strict market economy, is it uh, will uh, pays for street lights and parks and sidewalks and streets and things like that. In a true market economy, those public goods uh, would not get paid for by the government. Um, it does not give security to the sick or aged. If if you don't have enough money when you retire in a market economy, then you someone else has to take care of you, not the government. Um, during the U.S. industrial boom, uh, business owners uh, uh, got rich, and the workers kind of had uh, stayed at a low pay uh, because in a market economy, the businesses decide how much to pay the workers, and businesses did not address problems caused by industrialization, things like pollution um, and uh, dangerous factories. And in industrial societies, uh, they adopt some government control of the economy. So like in the United States and other European countries, the government does have some involvement to try and protect the workers and to uh, protect the environment. What we have now is called a mixed economy, uh, which is, has some elements of the market economy and some elements of the command economy. 
uh, a little heavier on the marketing.